Hello, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can do form swapping on a section of your web page in order to provide faster and in my opinion better user experiences. Here are a few examples of web pages that I've made that use this technique. This is memplay.com and if you go to the sign in and registration portion you'll see that, that we do form swapping for all the membership related forms. Same thing you will see on Servers OK, a new server monitoring system I released. If you go to the sign-in section, you're going to see that we're going to swap forms there. So that's what we're going to try to do. So let's get to it. I started with an internet application template for MVC4, which has a default membership implementation. As you can see from the account controller, I have removed a lot of the code and I just left enough to make our demonstration. So let's see this working. Right now, this is what you would see for this application. This would be the home page, and as you notice, I removed a lot of things. If you click login, you go to one page, and if you click register, you go to another page. What we're gonna do is just have them both on a single page and just swap them around. The first step is to convert these actions into partial views. So let's go to the account controller here and we're simply just going to say that this is now a partial view. I like to follow the standard of putting underscore as a prefix for my partial views. And this now has to uh, return a partial view. And we will do the same for register. All right, nothing else will change here. We will still take advantage of the anti-forgery token uh, functionality. But now we have to change the actual views and add the underscore them so we, we can preserve that convention. So let's go here and I'm just simply going to rena rename this to underscore login and rename this to underscore register. Now because these are no longer web pages they don't need some of the things that, that they have by default. So I'm just going to remove that and it's going to be a plain, um, plain partial view. Same thing for the login. I'm just going to say here, login. We are going to need the, the uh, validation script, so I'm just going to put them under index, which is where we're going to put all our code. So to make sure our changes are working, I'm going to compile, and then I'm going to go directly to, to, those, um, to those partial views. So if I go to login, there it is. And if I go to register, here it is. One last preparation issue. We're going to add uh, some classes to these two links so we can identify them via JavaScript. So I will open the login partial. And in here, instead of ID, I'm just going to say it's a class. And we're using classes instead of IDs because we're going to have multiple links that are going to drive the same action. I could have used a data attribute, but just uh, for the moment, I'm just using class for demo. Here, I'm going to change these links because uh, these pages no longer exist. So actually, I'm just going to redirect them to the index page. They're not going to be reached anywhere because uh, we're going to over we're going to override the link behavior anyway. Okay, now to the fun part. We're going to start on the index page. And the first thing I'm going to add here, and I'm going to do a copy and paste from, from my other solution, is to add a couple divs. Here I also added, uh, let me zoom that up, uh, add in an ID so we can reference it. And this second div is just so we have like a context that the form is existing within the web page. So far, nothing too special. Let's see how that's looking right now. Okay, we have our space here where the forms will go and just some random text there. Now in this demo, I will be adding 
the the JavaScript directly on the page, but I I recommend that you uh, always use external page external JavaScript files. We are definitely going to do something when the document is ready. So let's get that set up. So I'm going to copy some functions here. This first function is just a listener to the click event for the login link. And what is this is going to do is load a membership view. Loading a membership view is a simple jQuery get to a URL. And it populates the data that it gets into the HTML content of our membership panel, which if you remember, is a div right here in our body. Finally, we call prepare loaded form, and what this is going to do is make sure all the validations were rebinded, and this was explained in a previous video. All right, so that's it. Let's see what this does. If I refresh the page, we'll see I'm going to click login, and it has loaded my, my form, so nothing too special there. Let's do the same for register. I'm just going to redo this here, and the selector is going to be the register class, and it's going to load the register form. Again, no need to recompile. Everything should be working right now. So that's it. We're swapping. Let's just add an H2 there on the register page so we know we're there. All right, that's good. In addition, you may want to have some transition effects. That could be done really easy with JavaScript. So I'm just going to use one of the easiest forms here. I go into the function where we load our membership view. And I'm basically just going to say it to uh, fade out the existing content. And after I loaded a form, I'm just going to fade it back in. So let's see it working. Refresh the page here. And I go to login. And we can see how it fades out and in. That's great. And now we're going to do some tidy up. And specifically, we see here the register link is still pointing to that old page that we removed so we're gonna update that and what I'm actually just gonna do is come here and not even use this tag I'm just gonna use a plain HTML tag and I'm gonna give it the class and um, it's gonna be this is gonna be to the register And since we're doing this, let's just add it also to the register and we'll add one to go back to the uh, login page. So now I have the links, but if you have used JavaScript and dynamically loading things before, you know that this won't work because I need to rebind the, the jQuery event handlers and uh, I need to do that after I reload the form. So what I'm going to do here is just do a little bit of refactoring. Um, actually, these two functions should be outside of, of there. These are the two functions that bind the click events. So I'm just going to take them out here and say, well, when I load, I'm going to bind the membership links. And I'm going to do a function there for that. And put them in there. Now, when the page loads, it's going to bind the membership links. But when the uh, membership view loads, it should actually rebind the links as well. So with the, those things there, it should be working now. So I reload, I load the form initially, I register, and I log in, and all the links are working. 
Okay, one more thing. When you go to the page, you originally won't want to have this here. So let's load the sign in page by default. And because we know the low membership view will call bind events, will call membership links. So let's just remove that. And now by default, when we load the page, uh, the, login, the login screen will come up. Now we've done everything we need to in the front end. We need to make sure that our when you post, something happens. One thing that I should have mentioned before because it's really important is that all the validation on these uh, forms is still there. We're not going to lose any of the validations. And it all comes from the original validation functionality that we're used to on MVC. So yeah, I wanted to mention that all the validation still works on the front end. So the validation is working, but posting really doesn't do anything. We need to close the loop by implementing something on those actions that are handling the HTTP posts. So let's go to the account controller. And the first thing I'm going to do is just rename it so uh, so they have the underscore. Uh, by default, uh, the forms will post the same uh, name. And now what we're going to do is just tell these uh, actions that they're going to re actually return a JSON result. So both the login and the register. Here I'm just going to copy some uh, snippets of code from, from my other solution. And, uh, and for testing purposes, I'm saying that if the username is fail, we're going to send an error response. And otherwise, we're going to send a success response. So I'm using uh, JSON, res uh, JSON response factory. Uh, it's a small utility I use just to standardize the way I return JSON on my applications. And uh, there is a blog post on, on my blog if you want to read about it. What you need to know here is that I'm sending either a response or a success. And we'll do that both for the login and the register. Okay, so now that our HTTP posts are ready, we need to hook it up with the JavaScript. So again, I go to my index and I'm going to add yet another function. And this function is basically going to handle that submit. So I'm going to call it bind form event. But as you see here, the main thing that it is doing is a handler for the submit event. And it checks is if the form itself is valid. It's, uh, and if it's valid, it's going to call the action on the form with a serialized object as data. And all it does is uh, if that is success, it says that everything went OK. And if not, it shows an error message. Let's see what error messages I'm, I'm sending back. It's either a success or the response is, uh, you told me to fail. And because we're sending username fail. So all I need to do now is when I'm preparing the loaded form is to uh, bind the form, the submit event. So I'll just send here a form. And that should do the trick. Let's just see it working. I'm reloading the page. Uh, it loads the login. And I give it my name and any password. And it says OK. Now, if I say fail, it should say, well, you told me to fail. Anything works. Fail doesn't work. Now let's go see in the register. Uh, fail, fail, and then any password. It's error because I'm sending the username fail. But if I send any other, it's going to be success. So that's it. To recap, we created partial views for each one of the forms of, that we needed. We created all the JavaScript to load the forms and uh, be able to swap between them. 
Then we created the handlers for the HTTP post. And finally, we binded the forms to handle the submit. And that's it. That's working. I hope you find this cast useful and that it helps you on your day-to-day -day work.